Omar Khan, I say you done good. Yeah, what do they call them, the con artists? <laughs> so where we left off yesterday, the Steelers had just drafted outside linebacker out of Wisconsin, Nick Herbig, in the fourth round. And we know what all that entailed. First, with this pick, it meant Tomlin completed his family infinity gauntlet officially. Uh, but also, it was just another addition to an already great draft because up to that point, I'd say we were looking like an A-plus for a draft grade for the first uh, three rounds with Broderick Jones, Joey Porter Jr., Keanu Benton, and Darnell Washington. And then our first pick in the fourth round, you mean to tell me we get that third edge rusher in Nick Herbig? Nick Herbig, stud. So yeah, it was already a slam dunk draft, but it wasn't over for us just yet because we had two more seventh round picks. We had to wait a little bit in between that fourth rounder and going in the seventh. But I'll say this, with how well the Steelers did with those first five picks, I don't think it really mattered what we did in the seventh round. We were playing with house money. But, uh... Again, I feel like we only added to what was already good here in the seventh round. Uh, the first pick was Corey Trace Jr., cornerback out of Purdue. There's a few reasons I really like this draft selection. Even though it's a seventh rounder, I think it says some stuff. One, we are focused on the secondary. We are really trying to bolster up the unit, bring in depth, and make it one of our strengths, which is something I don't think... We could really say on a consistent basis over the last 20, 25 years when you're talking about that secondary in that cornerback room. Like, think about us right now on paper. Patrick Peterson, Levi Wallace, Joey Porter Jr. In the slot, Arthur Marlette. We also picked up Shannon Sullivan, who was really good with the Packers when he was there. Had a little bit of a down year with the Vikings. I'll talk about him probably in a video tomorrow. Uh, but again, just bringing him in combined with drafting two corners just shows... We're taking cornerbacks seriously. We're, like, we're trying to make it something we can count on, uh, not only this season, but going forward. Uh, but also, don't forget, we got a Keller Witherspoon in there. We got a James Pierre for depth. And then you add this guy out of Purdue, Corey Trice Jr. And the other thing, it's got to be that this is a good value because a lot of people, a lot of draft experts out there, a lot of mocks and stuff, viewed him as a top 100 to like a top 120 prospect in this class. And we were able to get him in the seventh round. So that's a steal in and of its own right. What I also like is his style of play. Press up, man corner, physical, good size too, 6'3", 210. And because of that, some people thought he was going to be making the switch to safety when he entered the league. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case with the Steelers. He's going to stick at corner. Combine that with us drafting a JPJ in the second round, who has similar attributes. I mean, both of these dudes for... Their size and how they tested at the combine uh, were like in the top 95%, I, I believe, in terms of athleticism score. I just say it's a damn good pick. There's nothing wrong with it at all. We got great value with where we selected him at. He fits that physical brand of football. It seems like we're really trying to promote going back to the latter portion of last season and what we've done throughout this whole offseason. So there's the fit there. And I like us. Taking a chance at corners, almost throwing darts at a dartboard. It's a seventh round pick. If it doesn't work out, oh well. But if it does, you got JPJ and Corey Trice Jr., two corners that maybe you could bank on for the future. Uh, that would be some impact right there. So good pick here with Corey Trice Jr. out of Purdue. And then our last seventh round pick, I'm gonna I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one. We got Spencer Anderson offensive lineman out of maryland to put it simply this was us bringing in another guy who's going to compete for depth on the offensive line and it could be at all three positions of tackle guard and center because that's where he played uh, with the terrapins he was all over the place i'd say the early betting favorite is he's got the best chance to be our backup center because we have no one else there right now but i could also see him competing with a Kendrick Green for a backup guard spot. Also with uh, LaRaven Clark uh, over at the offensive tackle position. So nothing wrong with this pick either. And nothing wrong at all. Now, there are some people that made it to the undrafted free agents. I guess we could have taken here instead of Spencer Anderson, like an Ivan Pace Jr., like an Eli Rex, like a Rajon Wright. Like, I think it would have been really cool to take one of these players with that last pick. Because you can always get depth offensive linemen. 
I feel like it would have been a good scenario just to say, ah, you know what? Fuck it. Why not? We already drafted two corners. Why not bring in an Eli Rex and, and mix it up a little bit? Maybe those three guys could be the cornerstones for this secondary going forward. Like there's an upside play in, in taking an Eli Rex. Also, an Ivan Pace Jr. Like I think we already have his prototype on the roster in a Mark Robinson, but why not take him in the seventh? I thought he was going to go in like the third or fourth. If you watch his highlights, he obviously got that dog in him. He's just a bit undersized. So a little disappointed there that maybe we couldn't just make this splash like, fuck it, why not pick? But at the same time, it's not the end of the world because Eli Ricks was there with our first seventh round pick, but we passed on him to get a Corey Trice. And again, I feel like we already have an Ivan Pace type of guy in Mark Robinson. But overall, excellent draft. I stick with the draft grade of an A+. Omar Khan did his thing, and I'd say Steeler Nation is pretty happy about it. Across the board, even the national media is giving this draft class by the Steelers huge props. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you have any critiques? Do you think there are some players that we missed out on? What are you most excited about? But We'll talk a little bit further tomorrow. I'll go over the undrafted free agent list and also talk about the Chandon Sullivan pickup. So stay tuned for that. Again, stay chilling. I hope you guys enjoyed the weekend. I'll see you tomorrow on Monday. Peace.